All right, Clinton. You called down the thunder, well now you got it. You see that? David Backus, former captain of the Blues, just got buried by Sammy Blade. Again, I am not a graphic artist. I'm an editor. That's the best I could do with that. No, but it's still, it's awesome. It, it, it's it's that great. But uh, John, start us off with your thoughts. Um, That intro got me pretty pumped. The, or the first time I saw it, I was just like, you know what? You're right. Hell's coming. Hell's coming with it. And you know what? Say what you want about losing Butch Navich. I, I know that I've blasted Drury for the trade. I didn't think it was good. Still don't think it was good enough. At the end of the day, this team might be more balanced. It, it really might. And you know what? Pavel Buchnevich had, had a, a really good year last year. He was really the play driver on that line. Um, but if you put Alexi Lafreniere there, who we all think is probably going to be a much better player than Pavel Buchnevich at his peak, um, you put him on that line. You put Capo Caco on the other wing, who looked like he was ready to step up into a top ten. Put them with Mika Zibanejad. You put Ryan Strom with obviously his his man Artemi Panarin and Vitaly Kravtsov on that second line, and you put Chris Kreider with Philip Heedle and a Barkley Goudreau on that third line. I mean, that third line looks like it's one of the better third lines in the entire league. It could be. And then your fourth line is Sammy Blay, Kevin Rooney, and Ryan Reeves. I mean, Ryan Reeves, what he does for this team. And I know everybody was saying, oh, he's a face puncher, he's a goon, this and that, and he plays on the edge. Yeah, he does. But you know what? If he's a dirtbag, he's our dirtbag now. And what he does for the other players on the team is he lets them go and rah, rah, rah with their chests out like that and going around. Because you know that if anyone takes retributions or, or takes liberties and shots at the players on this team – they know that they have somebody that's going to go out there and do the exact same thing to the other team and find the guy that did it and punch his damn face in. So you know what? If you're allowed, like if Anthony, I mean, you, Mark, you, same thing. You guys all know what it's like to have that type of guy on a team where you can go out there and you don't have to worry as nearly as much. I'm not going to say because it, it, it can't, it won't or can't happen because it can still happen. But when you know you have that guy out there, it does wonders for you. It, it, it's a mental thing, and you can't measure that. And not only that, but Reeves is a locker room guy. Did you see his videos that he posted on Twitter when he came uh, over? No, I did not. He, he's going to, you know, he's pumping all the fans up. He's talking about how he wants to go out there and make a difference. He's already endeared himself to the fans. I mean, this guy's going to be a fan favorite. So uh, a lot of the people that are saying, oh, I don't want him, I don't want him, whatever. You know what? When he goes out there and he starts fucking throwing that right around, Telling you right now, a lot of opinions are going to change on him. And Sammy Blay, physical guy, Barkley Goudreau, pedigree, winner, penalty killer, defensive player, fighter. I mean, this is an element. And, and like Marty said, copycat league. That's what I've been saying for the last week and a half now. It's a copycat league. They're copying Tampa Bay. They're literally copying Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay did the same thing. They got smacked by Columbus. What did they do? Maroon, Coleman, Gaudreau, and they won twice in a row. So you know what? It, it's it, it's a good thing. I, I think that, it, and it's not just a response to Wilson. I've said this. I've said it on Twitter. It's a culmination of events going back to the Carolina series. When the minute that Brady Shea laid out Jesper Foss, Jesper Foss in, that, um, in that first game, in that yeah. first period, right away, that's when everything started happening. That was the that was the minute that this all came into that this all came into play. But you know, it, it, I I think they're a more balanced team. I I think that they're they're going to be possibly a better team, especially if those kids take steps. They they can replicate that. Uh, they can replace that production. So 
I, I think there's a lot of positivity here, and I think teams like the Islanders and the Penguins and the Bruins that slap them around, they're going to have a lot tougher time with the Rangers this year. Yeah, that's what we were talking about this, um, when we broke the news and you did a five-hour Q&A. John really did a five-hour Q&A uh, on Ryan Reeves. But um, it's, it's, it's just that. This is a shot across the bow. This is so that way maybe we can have some segments talking about how the Rangers are the ones that roughed up the Islanders and with the man down below in the box instead of us and looking at Anthony and going, gee, the Islanders really beat the piss out of the Rangers. The, um, the answer on uh, the last three games against the Islanders, when they were outscored, uh, let's see, uh, 13 to 1, if I recall the, everything correctly. Correct me in the comments if I'm off slightly on that. But that was a joke. That's where David Quinn really kind of stealed his fate. And you know what? That ain't happening anymore. The, the Rangers can look over at Tampa Bay. They can look over at the Islanders, and they can start saying, we're going to go toe-to-toe with you guys. And it's not just about Tom Wilson roughing up some guys. This is about making goalies uncomfortable, making guys uncomfortable. When I got a guy running people, I'm uncomfortable on the ice. And that's why eventually, when I was in juniors, I was the guy that started running people. So that was that was fun, to be honest with you. Um, but it's just, you know, the that's the message. The message was very clear. This team needed to get tougher. So now, everybody in the Metro, take notice. Because the New York Rangers, they're coming for you. They can score goals, and now they can they can suppose – we'll see it on the ice. They're going to be standing up to you. They are not going to turn tail and, t- and hide, and you're not going to have Brendan Smith go out there to be miscast as the tough guy. But they got a tough guy. You're not going to get Brian Boyle miscast as the tough guy anymore. They're, this is all things the Rangers have to have. Matt Morton uh, – uh, Brad Marchand really doesn't fight anymore. But, I mean, Matt Morton, Tom Wilson, look out. We got guys to answer you. Anthony? Yeah, you know, um, you guys really said it all. But, you know, John, and you've said it in the past, the Rangers got pushed around by the Islanders, the Capitals, the Bruins, uh, you know, some of the teams in the Metro. Um, so while while on paper, if you look at it, um, you know, because obviously they've lost the they lost the skilled forward in Buchnevich and didn't bring anyone else in. You could say, okay, well, maybe they're a little worse in that regard. But it doesn't matter. They have enough skill to begin with, so they could afford to lose him. You brought in toughness that they needed, so I think it will balance out. Um, I think even though they did lose Buchnevich, they're a better team right now. Um, you know, and you, you look you look at this league. You know, the Lightning had that third line of of Coleman, Goudreau, and Gord. Um, you know, all guys, even though Gord's a smaller guy, he played he played with Jam. Obviously, you know what Barclay Goudreau does. And, you know, Blake Coleman, even though he's he's skilled guy, um, he plays he plays a hard nosed game. So those are the those are the type of players you need um, to really be competitive in this league, aside from skill. And the Rangers were missing that. Um, so yeah, now when they play the Islanders, they have guys that could go up against the Martin Clutterbucks Ezekus line that are really physical. Um, they can go into, you know, Washington and, you know, combat Tom Wilson. Uh, the Boston Bruins play heavy games, so the Rangers could, you know, play that back to them now. Um, so it's – Drury made all he, – he pushed the right buttons, um, aside from the Buchnevich trade. But other than that, I like bringing in Goudreau. Um, you know, Ryan Reeves, while he has flaws, he does what he's there to do. He's, he's there to, you know, hit people and fight when he needs to be. So – um, I'm interested to see if Gallant uses him as an everyday, you know, as an everyday player, um, or does he only dress against the more physical opponents? So when they play a faster team, um, does Reeves sit in the press box? That's yet to be determined. But um, Reeves is going to bring a lot to the Rangers. So um, I'm interested to see how Gallant handles that situation. But um, and listen, the off season's not over too. The Rangers could still make some moves, just like any other team. So um, you know, so far so good. If I was a Ranger fan, I'd, I, you know, I'd be relatively happy. But um, I think they addressed the biggest weakness they had, which was team toughness. So they're good for them. By the way, Joe, uh, I got family that moved out to Arizona. I have not been to Tombstone yet. But, yeah, sometimes it does feel like 150 degrees whenever you're there. And even though that's probably going to be my destination eventually. But, yeah, that's a different story. All right. So uh, just one last round. Uh and actually, Anthony, since you were up last, uh, what would you give the Rangers as a grade this offseason? 
All right. So I don't like the Buchanovich trade. Um, and obviously they, they didn't add yet, at least. They didn't add their Eichel or, or another top center. Um, I like I like the acquisition of Goudreau. His contract is, you know, limited, no trade. That's maybe a negative. Um, I mean, Jared Tenori, Patrick Nemeth, you know, they're bigger, tougher guys. So, again, I get it. Not the most skilled guys, uh, bottom pair guys. Um, I, don't know, so I, I would say overall, I would, you know, so I don't know. I'm hovering between like a, like a, like a B minus or a C. Ooh, okay. You're a little higher on it than I am. Uh, I'm, Pro, I'm I mean, going to see. Sorry, I was just going to say. It, you don't have to change it. I was, no, no, I'm not. I'm, but I, what I was going to add was going between that, though, I'm leaning more towards C. Okay. Okay. I'm just below you. I, I, I said a C minus. And the reason I say that is because the Butch Nemich trade was just bad. It, it, there's no way around it. It was bad. It, is it the end of the world? No. You have two guys. You have three guys that actually want to step up and try to, re, uh, you know, replace his production in Lafreniere, Kako, and Kravtsov. And I, I think that Lafreniere and Kako could probably replace his production this year. Uh, Kravtsov, I'm not sure on yet. But if he plays with Strom and Panarin, there's a very good chance that he he puts up the type of top six numbers that you would uh, that you would think. They addressed the toughness. They addressed getting better in their bottom six, which is absolutely – it was paramount for them to do that. Um, if you put Kreider on that third line, I think it makes it a better a better third line. Not only that, but you added a guy like Patrick Nemeth, who is an upgrade over Brendan Smith. I don't like the contract necessarily. I think he's a little – I think it's a little high for him. I don't think he's a great defender, but – I think that they view him as a compliment for Nils Lundqvist. So if Nils Lundqvist comes over, which they signed him, so that's one of the positives this offseason. They got Nils Lundqvist under contract, and there's a lot of people that'll think he'll be over this year. Um, I will say that I, I like Sammy Blay as a player. I, I think that as a player, he could be a real good bottom six player. Um, and then the other thing that not a lot of people are talking about right now is that Drury left this team open to other moves. There's a lot of cap space after even after Igor's potential extension. Like if that deal gets signed in the five to six million dollar range, they still have a ton of cap room to play with, and they're probably going to use a good portion of it. So Drury left them open. He didn't give out any egregiously bad contracts, even though he might have overpaid a bit for Goudreau and Nemeth, but. Not really anything that's terrible. So I'll give it a C minus. I could even I could see why you would give it a C. It's not bad, but it's not necessarily complete. But that's why I I, I don't give it a D though because of the fact that they they address some things. But Drury also left them open to be able to make other moves, which I think was really important for them. So they could go get Eichel if they want to, or they could go into next season and I think they could still be a playoff team with, with if they stand pat. By the way, uh, Rich Rotten, that's a great uh, profile pick you got for that. That's awesome. Um, and, yeah, they still need a 3C. Uh, if they want to upgrade from Heedle, I mean, you could still – I'm so torn between Heedle. Um, I, I want I want them to upgrade to get more of a Yanni Gord type. But, you know, on the other hand, it's also – I like Heedle. I want him to – I think he just might be too finesse for the role that he's in right now um i'm seeing a lot of c's right now in the comments mine is actually going to be a b minus uh i said earlier in back when th these videos were solo they they were going to have to move butch nevich especially with kratzoff coming up it, and i've maintained all along you couldn't just leave him on the fourth line you got to get production out of him and that's what they did um they're moving kratzoff up in the lineup they got rid of butch nevich who his contract was going to be higher in 5.8 million four years it's that's that's a lot to swallow when you're trying to develop more talent. Um, and you know what? This, oh, by the way, Jeff, thank you very much. Um, and they right. need to develop more talent. And uh, and you're not going to do that by keeping guys like uh, Vitaly Kratzoff on the fourth line with Brett Howden. It's just not going to happen. So they're what they're doing right now, what they're setting up, I, I can't wait to see this team play right now. 
and especially with Gerard Gallant in there. And the one thing I was trying to get was when uh, Kurt Russell waves to Sam Elliott, where Gerard Gallant is Sam Elliott on the train. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So by the way, if you haven't seen awesome Tombstone, movie. see Tombstone. And, awesome movie. And, and yeah, John, you're right about this too. Flexibility is the key. You now can move Chris Kreider down the lineup, Lafreniere up the lineup, and you can also move guys in and out, especially in the bottom six. Sammy Blay doesn't have to play 80, 82 games or 80 games. Um, neither does Ryan Reeves, but they could play 40 each right there. There you go. Yeah, um, and, and I mean, another thing that we haven't even talked about like that, because I'm I, sorry to interrupt, but the, the flexibility – Dryden Hunt is a, a pretty good defensive winger. So if you want to take him and put him in for 40 games and put Ryan Reeves in for the other 40, and especially the big bouts against you know the Capitals where you have Wilson, the Islanders where you have Martin, you can go and do that. No? Uh, Jacob, we will we'll be talking about the Adam Fox deal in just a little bit, our potential deal. Uh, we actually haven't even mentioned the Igor Sesterkin deal. Um, really quick on this. Do you think six million is going to be too rich for what he is right now? No, I, I don't think so because I think if you bridge him at what four, uh, if they would look at for probably a bridge, I think if you bridge him at four, you come back to him in two years, he's going to look for seven to eight. And the, and I had this argument with yesterday with somebody on Twitter who really didn't understand how that works, and I had to explain to this person that. You, you can't you can't sit there and compare other contracts. Like he he pointed out that Mark Andre Fleury was moved for nothing at seven million, and he was a Vezina winner. You you really can't make that comparison. The way that it works in the NHL is a lot of teams will buy out UFA years and pay for potential. I mean, I remember when the Edmonton Oilers did it with uh, Jordan Eberle and Taylor Hall like uh, nine years ago, <clears throat> right before the lockout before that half-season lockout. And everybody was saying, wow, how could you give them $6 million a piece? You know, like, these are guys that you were gambling on getting better. And you know what? They didn't get substantially better. Taylor Hall did. But Jordan Everly kind of never got back to that plateau. But Jordan Everly, his contract ended up actually looking really good because the cap went up over time. And it worked out for them. So getting Shesterkin to $6 million now for seven to eight years actually would benefit the Rangers going forward. Because if you bridge him, come back to him in two years, he's going to want a hell of a lot more money than that. So don't All right. really gamble on himself. Well, those are our grades on the Rangers and their offseason. Um, so far, it's only been about three weeks, although the league official year started last week, uh, last Wednesday. So uh, what do you think about it? Uh, I see you guys have been leaving a lot of grades so far. Keep, keep commenting. Uh, leave us a like. Don't forget to leave us a like as you're commenting on the Brian Leach autograph puck. Uh, make sure, if you haven't done it yet, uh, to put Leach in the comments to be entered into the drawing. Please only do it. I try to do it only once. I'm trying to keep up to make sure that it's fair for everyone. All right. Um, but we're going to be moving on also because there's a lot of secrecy across the river. And we got to find... If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Mm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.